Macandria Maurizi was born on this day, 2007, and he became a Grand Master in 2021. So a young man and already a Grand Master, the youngest French player ever to become a Grand Master, beating Etienne Bacot by a couple of months. And Bacro's record for youngest French grandmaster lasted for over two decades, 24 years, I believe, since uh, Bacro um, established that record. And then it was broken here. So there may be a lot of promise for this young grandmaster going forward. We don't know. We certainly will see some other youngsters as we consider some of these games. This first game was played in um, October 2016. So the, the young man would have been under 10 uh, when this was played. So we won't expect too much. David Gasparian is actually an American master, although I don't know if he was always from the United States. This was a game at the Batumi World Cadets Under 12 Years of Age Championship, Batumi in the Republic of Georgia. And Gasparian, with birds opening, played pawn to f4 d5 is the dutch variation e3 knight f6 and by the way we are not using any bots on the first go through i've decided to turn off the eval bar i'm going to give you my comments then we'll run it through the analysis and um, see how accurate the players were and how accurate I was in my commentary. So B3 here by Gasparian. More common is knight F3. Let me show you the most common line is knight F3, G6, B3, bishop G7, bishop B2, kingside castles, bishop E2, C5, kingside castles, and knight C6 is the most frequently played line. Instead, Gasparian with pawn B3 right away. All right, bishop F5 here. C5 is the more frequently played move. But bishop F5, bishop B2. And queen's knight to d7, and here more frequent is e6. But queen's knight to d7, knight f3, now pawn e6, bishop e2. And you still see the same basic theme regardless of the move order, bishop d6 here. H6 is slightly more popular here, but um, Marcandria with Bishop D6. Gasparian castles, now H6, and Knight C3. Now, Knight E5 is played more often in this position, but Gasparian with Knight C3. C6, keeping the knight off of B5. And knight D4 is a novelty. And it has not been played since. Bishop D3 had been played a number of times. Knight D4, unique to this game alone. That hits the bishop, which retreats to H7. And we are now in uncharted waters, otherwise uncharted waters. Queen e1, very common motif when 
the F man is pushed is number one, get your queen on E1, and number two, get your king off of the diagonal. But in this case, it's not as important to move the king since the E man obstructs the A7 G1 diagonal. But we won't be surprised if we sing, see king H1 at some point. Queen E7. And pawn to d3 here. Perhaps better is bishop to d3. Number one, you want to keep your pieces active. And number two, you want to be careful about creating weaknesses. Here g5 was played. I thought that he should play e5. I gave this an exclam. The point is we're already getting a nice break here. And here we can grab this and threaten this here. So that will likely compel um, queen to g3 and leave white with doubled pawns on the g file. Instead, Maritzi with pawn g5, knight a4, and queenside castles. Now, a6 is an option here. The point of a6 is to hold down this b5 square so that c5 can be played, but knight b5 is then precluded by the pawn on a6. So that's the idea of a6. He went ahead and queenside castles. a3 by Gasparian. Now pawn takes the G the G pawn takes the F pawn. E takes F. And the king's rook to G8. White played queen to C3. Not what we usually see with this kind of a setup. As I mentioned earlier, the usual idea of queen E1 is to come in this direction, and certainly queen h4 would be a reasonable alternate right here. But queen c3 was Gasparian's choice. Now pawn e5. But with this queen here, I'd prefer to get the king to b8 myself. Pawn e5 by... Mauritzi. And the point now is the knight can take here. He did not. He played knight to b5, exploiting this pin, but not in a very effective way. I gave this a double question mark. All annotations are my own, by the way. My idea here was knight takes the um, pawn, opening this line to the king. And I don't think white has a thing to worry about with this sacrifice because after pawn takes, queen takes, well, first of all, you're at least getting two pawns for your knight. Secondly, your opponent's king is standing out in the open in the emperor's new clothes. King to b8 would have to be played here. And you could continue with queen b5 check, forcing the king to the corner. And you can even just harass the king a little bit if you so desire. And if worse comes to worse, you can force a repetition and go home with a quick half point. Knight b5 is, in my mind, a blunder and a missed chance to um, just go home early. But I don't think Maurizi responded to this quite accurately. He played rook d e8. I give this a question mark. I think much better and worthy of an exclam is bishop here to b8. And now a6 would pack a winning punch. 
If black, if white plays pawn takes here, I will actually counterattack with d4 because now what will the queen do? If you take the pawn, you've lost your knight. And on the other hand, if you take the pawn with your knight, queen takes here and once again you've got a big attack this way you've got pressure here you've got pressure here you've got a lot of attack going on so i was not a big fan of queen's rook to e8 here one would have thought that the whole purpose of knight to b5 was to capture this bishop, but instead he played pawn takes the pawn on e5, which I also give a question mark. I think he should go ahead with knight takes the bishop, and he's perfectly safe and sound after queen takes knight, then take this pawn, and after captures... Um, well, I would suppose something like bishop f3 should be fine. Let's go back. Pawn takes here allows the bishop to capture and hit that queen. Gasparian throws in an, a, a Zwischenzug with knight takes pawn check. This is not effective because now king b8 also puts pressure here. He then sacrificed his knight on c6 with check, and pawn takes the pawn, and queen takes the pawn. And white feels like, well, at least I've picked up these pawns, and once again the black king is out in the open with very little coverage. But there is a tactic available. Note that this bishop is undefended. And in line with our queen, which means we have a discovered attack. This was not played. You can come this way as well. Bishop takes bishop. But even better is probably bishop takes the pawn because it's check. In either case, this queen can come and grab this bishop after the white king gets out of check. Therefore, bishop c7 I gave a question mark to. It does discover an attack, but remember, discovered attacks, in order to have teeth, the blocking piece has to create an attack of its own. Queen b5 check, knight b6. Now, rook takes g2 is a threat. But after knight takes knight here, that's a self-mate. We'll show that in a moment. Let me point out that Rook takes knight is also a self-mate because we're playing rook takes g2, to which I gave a double x glam. The point being, after king takes, queen takes, bishop check. You can block with your rook, but my rook's coming over with check. And before long, it will be checkmate. Obviously, if the king comes to h3, Queen g4 is mate. And if the king comes to h1, we are going to play. Let's show this line. We're not going to quite take the rook yet. We're going to go ahead and play bishop um, e4. Give check here. And you're forced to block with your rook. And that's checkmate. 
Um, what should he have played? He probably should have played rook to f2 to keep the game level. That would be my recommendation. And black can save his knight by moving it to d7. And then perhaps something like this. And white... Well, but then I've got queen h4. Um, yeah, you can't play bishop f3 there. You better get out of this rook's line of fire. It's probably best. Okay, let's go back. Knight takes. Knight is a self-mate. With the same technique that I showed, just some pieces on slightly different squares. And rook takes g2. Once again, I'm giving a double x glam after king takes rook, queen takes bishop check. It's pretty much the same thing that I showed after rook takes knight. It's just different. With rook f2, there's rook g8 check. And with king h1, there is... The aforementioned bishop e4 check. That's at least an exclam, if not a double. And sure enough, after uh, pawn takes bishop, queen takes pawn, he resigned because it's mate after the block here. Checkmate on the magic square.